Hey everybody, how are you guys doing today? I want to welcome you to a maker's studio. My name is Kim and normally you can find me blogging and doing projects over on my social media and my uh, website, which is Salvaged Living. I would love to have you join me over there as well. But it's always fun when I get to pop over and say hi to you guys here and do a little crafting with Maker Studio. I love their products. I love the ideas that you can do with these things. And you guys are going to love today's project because it's going to be really beautiful. Plus, to top it off, we have a giveaway today. So just for fun from Maker Studio, they're going to give away one of these stencils. So you're going to want to comment on this live. Um, to be entered to win, make sure you share it with your friends and come back and let us know who you shared with and tag three friends below so they can come and craft along with us and get a chance to win a free stencil as well. I want to show you exactly the products we're going to be using and then we'll dive right in. So drop cloth is one of my favorite materials to work with and we're going to use some drop cloth today. You can get these at the hardware store, you can order them online. Um, even Walmart has drop cloth, so just get a good medium weight canvas drop cloth uh, for your projects. I promise you will not regret it. And then we're going to use this beautiful brand new stencil, which we're going to give away one today to a lucky winner. Um, it's a Paris map, and it's called Ode to Moth, okay? It's a beautiful giant stencil that you can use in a lot of different ways. I'll give you some ideas as we're crafting. Um, there's just some different things you could definitely do with this, this map stencil in part or in whole. Um, I'm going to use a giant squeegee and I'm going to be using gel art ink because we're going to be painting on fabric today. So when you want to paint on fabric and you want a permanent uh, fabric paint, you want to use the gel art ink. Okay. So there's ceramic paint, there's gel art ink, and there's chalk art. Chalk art is a washable paint that, um, it will stain your fabrics, but if you're ever going to wash this, I would say use the gel art ink um, and because it does do a permanent paint for you. So we're also going to use a little bit of adhesive, just some fabric attack, uh, fabric glue and some ribbon. So, oh, and one more thing, goodness gracious, a dowel rod. Now you could use a dowel rod, you could use a tree branch, um, just something that's you know, long and stick-like. So we're going to use that today and we're going to make a beautiful Paris map wall hanging. So stick with me. I'm going to turn the camera down so you can see exactly what I'm doing. But don't forget to tag your friends and say hi. Let me know where you're watching from because I always like to know who's here crafting with me today. All right, here we go. Okay, you guys, this is a large stencil. And we are going to make a really pretty wall painting. So I've got kind of scraps over here of this drop cloth that I love to use. What I'm going to do is it's just wide enough to accept this stencil. And it's definitely long enough, but I'm going to kind of cut it. You can see I use this stuff all of the time for different projects. And drop cloth is really awesome because it rips. I'm just going to cut this part off of it. Well, sometimes it rips. It rips in one direction. So I'm going to cut this. We'll clean it up in a little bit. But it's just got a really nice, warm, cozy feel. Makes it makes things feel a little soft and vintage. And this map just feels like it should be a soft and vintage kind of map. So you might want to iron your piece before. I don't think you have to though. And we're going to just take this giant stencil. It's brand new. Don't forget we're giving one away because that's super exciting. And Remember, if you're new here, these are mesh, they're adhesive, reusable stencils. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just get this spread out as flat as I can. And we're going to get this stencil started. 
for a stencil this big, I'm going to kind of fold it in half. And I want to start, I want to kind of find the middle. And I'm going to decide how straight this is. I want to get it pressed down really good on that fabric. And then if I pull this away, it kind of just peels that off really nice. Makes it easy to go on to your surface. One of the things about a stencil this large is it may seem daunting and you might think, what am I going to do with it? So I want to give you some ideas besides the one we're doing here today because I believe there's a lot of fun ways to use this stencil or any of these stencils, especially the large scale ones. So. Don't forget that you don't have to use the entire stencil. So if you just wanted to use like this little section or this little section or up here where it talks about Paris, you could easily do that and basically put it on just about anything. You could put it on plates, server, serving ware, that would be really pretty. Um, we're going to just kind of start small and get this in here. So when you're using these stencils, what you want to do is make sure you're pressing your paint through the stencil. Not too hard, but you do want to make sure it goes through the mesh. And you want to work a little bit quickly. I am going to, I see where I could get messy because I'm not always the neatest painter. So I'm going to take this tape. And you can see right here at the edge, that little bit of stencil is really close to the edge and I don't want to get it paint on the outside. So I'm going to just give myself a little extra wiggle room by taping it off. That way I can kind of go a little higher and not worry about getting that paint right on that edge. And I'm going to do that on the bottom as well. Kind of just noticed that when I started to put this down. That'll give me a little wiggle room that I need. All right. So, like I said, you could use this in parts and pieces. You could use it on dishes. It would be beautiful on a wall as like wallpaper, just on a repeat pattern. Once you get a section done, kind of move on. Okay, don't keep going over it if you can help it. I've got a little couple little holes in here I'm going to fill in. The kind of fun thing about this map in particular is it's so worn that if you do go over or get any pieces that you have some bleed through or whatever, it's not going to really show, which is lovely to me. I think that looks charming. And anyway, this is going to be so cozy. I love that you can make giant wall art because so many crafts don't allow you to really make things on a larger scale. And those are the things that are super expensive in the stores. And this is one of those things that you can buy and make for a fraction of the cost. Make a couple of, and you still have this giant stencil to use. Also, what I'm gonna say is it would be really pretty on stationery because you could do this on paper. You could do it on a chalkboard. Just, I mean, there's a million things you can use these stencils on, you guys. Put that in the comments. If you want something to talk about, give each other ideas. It's what I love about creative communities. We can all learn from each other and kind of get ideas from each other. So put it in the comments, like what other ideas you can think of how you would use this stencil in your home. I would love to hear it.
Okay, so this is just putting that silk screen to work, pushing that paint through this mesh stencil. You're gonna wanna make sure that as soon as you're done, you go and wash your stencil so that you don't let the paint dry in the cracks. I just see a couple little spots. Um, your, your stencil might get stained on the outside, like on the gray part, and that's no big deal. Don't worry about that. You just really wanna make sure you're saving your stencil from the uh, paint drying in the mesh, because that would make it not as crisp, not as clean the next time that you go to use it. So don't let your paint dry. That's number one, care for these stencils. Take care of them and you'll get lots of use out of them. We are almost done. I'm gonna show you how to put this all together. It's gonna to be so easy and so quick. These are, would make beautiful gifts. Just think of giving this as a housewarming gift. I would, I would love to get something like this. Hostess gifts. And um, you could also use different kinds of material. You could just use plain white material. You could use whatever goes with your style. I mean, if you wanted this to be more colorful, like more like Moulin Rouge kind of, you know, like there's beautiful colors that you can use of gel art ink. I went pretty traditional. All right, one last little squirt and we should be good to go. Right here on the edge. Just go over any little sections that I see. All right, I think that's good. All right, now's the moment of truth. It's so much fun. I love to pull the stencil off and get that first glance. It's a little bit like Christmas morning. So fun. If you're working in batches or you don't have time to go wash this, just craft with a little bucket of water next to you and stick it straight in a water bath and that'll help until you have time to go like thoroughly wash. Your stencil. Look how pretty that is, you guys. Oh my gosh, it's stunning. I love it. Love, love, love it. All right, now I'm going to tell you to be very cautious. Let this dry completely before you do any of the next steps that I'm about to show you. But I'm going to go ahead and do them a little bit and just be really careful. If I was doing this without you guys watching, I would definitely. <laughs> pause. So what I want to do is just put a little trim on it and so you can decide if you like. You don't have to have this seam in there obviously. I am going to glue this right under that seam. Do this and then what I'm going to do is trim that up underneath it. Hold on, let me just put that there. Fabri-Tac is a great glue you guys if you've never used it. Hold on, my lid came off. Uh, mess. It is super. So if you don't sew, this is your best friend, you guys. Sorry, I pulled the whole lid off instead of the little. And just put a little string it out across. And you are about to be good to go. Alright, so I'm going to put that right underneath my seam, but you could do it 
however you wanted to. It depends on how ornate you want to make this. You could put, you know, tassels at the bottom. You could cut the, the fabric into like fringe. Make sure you guys can see. I just wanted it to be kind of neat and trimmed. So I glued just mainly the top part of that. I'm actually going to leave this the width of this. So I'm going to pull this up, cut it to length on both sides. And then Now I'm going to cut back underneath this. I just didn't want to have to cut it twice. I wanted to make sure I got it the right length. You guys. Okay, here we go. Don't forget if you're just hopping on, we're doing a giveaway. We're giving away one of these beautiful Eau de Moth stencils. It's just a giant map stencil of France, of Paris. It's very beautiful. You can make it rustic like I'm doing. You could really make this very high end and do it in like a gold on a mirror. That would be beautiful. Like I said, you could do parts and pieces. I think, I don't know why I just keep thinking of dishware, like get dollar store dishware and put parts and pieces of this stencil on it. It would be gorgeous. Perfect for breakfast, brunch, croissants. All right, so then I'm gonna just tuck this under itself. So we'll clean up that edge down here like that. Can you see what I'm doing? Making sure. So we'll just do that to make it a nice clean edge. Do this. Make it a nice clean edge. Just kind of finishes the bottom off. So that'll dry. And then let's talk about how we're going to finish off the top. I really want to see how wet it is. It's pretty wet. I'm going to turn this around so I can deal with it this way. All right. So I have a dowel rod. You could use a branch. Um, there's probably other stuff you could use. You could actually stain this rod, which is something I might do. Um, I think it would be, and then there's a couple ways you can hang it once we do this. So really what I want to do is trim this up a little bit. So I'm going to flip it backwards. I'm just trying to work with wet paint here. I'm just going to trim this down because we don't need that much. These are not the best fabric scissors, you guys. You should probably have better fabric scissors than me. Don't copy that part. My mother would be appalled. All right, so what I'm going to do is take this. I left it. This fabric glue will take a minute to dry, you guys, but once it does, it holds really well. So you don't really need a ton. But what we're going to do is basically form a little pocket on the back. We want to kind of make it as straight as we can to the top line of our stencil so that, you know, this is equidistance all the way. It's going to be, let me do this.
All right, so when that's dry, you wanna be able to put pressure right here to where your glue is and where you just kind of formed a pocket on the back side. It's much easier to do this when it's fully dry, you guys. And then you just take your stick, whatever it is, and you can slide it in there. Or another way to do it is once your paint's completely dry, if you put this on its front side and then you lay that stick in there, you can wrap that around it and kind of see exactly how thick to make the pocket for your dowel rod. But now you have a wall hanging, you guys, and it's so easy to do. Um, you can hang this a lot of different ways. I would probably recommend taking some jute twine or some ribbon and tying it off onto the ends of the dowel rod and making it up into a triangle and hanging it from a piece up here like this. Or you can just put some nails and hang this right on those because it's very lightweight. You could also even put a picture hanger that you nailed into that dowel rod on the back. Um, so there's a couple different options on how you hang this. But now you have a really sweet, rustic looking map wall hanging. And I think it's just a great, great way to use this entire stencil. So I hope you liked it. Don't forget we have the giveaway. Make sure you're adding your name in the comments and telling us how you would use this stencil and inviting friends to come and join us, guys. My name is Kim. I blog at Salvage Living. And if you want to see some other ideas, I sure would love to have you over on my Facebook page or Instagram, wherever you like to hang out, or at salvageliving.com. So come visit. And thanks for hanging with me today, guys. Y'all have a great day. Bye.